So hi, um, I'm going to tell a story how we build a global Internet of Things data network um, from the ground up in three years now uh, available in more than 100, 100 countries. Um, and this is about IoT, and I think everybody heard about IoT, and we're a bit past the hype. We have seen the numbers, billions of devices, a lot of money. We all heard the talks. And um, it was in 2015 that I, uh, I sold my previous business to, uh, to Sanama. It was in media, and I was looking for a new, uh, new, new thing to do, a new, new startup, a new company. So I was looking into this hype of IoT, and then uh, somebody showed me this technology. Uh, Laura Wan, it was at a, at a distant meetup somewhere in, a, in the tech scene in Amsterdam. And um, I, was, I was super, super excited when I saw this. And um, Laura Wan is a, is a technology that allows you to connect sensors, small devices, over the air to the internet. And you do this by setting up your own infrastructure. You're setting up gateways and base stations, like you set up a Wi-Fi network. But these, are, uh, the, uh, these gateways are supporting LoRaWAN. And they have a range of 10 kilometers, and they can support up to 10,000 devices per gateway. So the battery efficiency is very high, so these devices can last on a battery very long. And you can make different base stations work together as one big network. Uh, and you can create your own network with that. And if you build apps on top of that, so for instance, here a smart parking app, you can create little micro VPNs per app to create end-to-end -end encryption. So you can create open infrastructure and have roaming devices across different networks, yet keeping your data secure through end-to-end -end encryption. And that sounds a lot like the real internet, right? All our traffic is passing over shared infrastructure, over shared servers, over shared cables, and yet we trust it because we trust that little green slot when we do internet banking, and that's, that slot is saying that it's end-to-end -end encrypted. So this protocol has all these features in it. So um, I'm a programmer by nature, so I got very excited about this te technology, and. Like, I have the tendency then just to run away with it uh, without thinking how we can make money. So, but I, I hold myself back and, and I was looking for like, okay, so where's the use cases? And the first thing I saw was did this, and this is a smart mousetrap. And if you know that if you place mousetrap in any, any developing country, you have to hire people to check if there's a mouse in the mousetrap. So, if you make the mousetrap smart and you make the mousetrap send a message when a mouse is caught, you have a, can have a huge efficiency because you just need very little people to manage your mousetrap business. So, so here's this, this, this like huge business case already. So I thought, okay, exciting new technology. There's some money to be made. Let's do something with it. And um, let's, I thought, let, let's just set up a few of these gateways. They have a 10 kilometer range. Let's set them up in Amsterdam and see what happens. And we do, um, do a little network. And I met up with my, my friend, Johan. So now uh, we're, we're co-founders of, of the Things Network. And we were discussing, like, if we're building this Internet of Things, like, let's, let's look at how the real Internet was created. And the real, real Internet was created by creating shared infrastructure, so connecting cables, routers, data centers, and creating an open protocol to make all this infrastructure work together, what we now all know as Internet Protocol, IP, IP address. So let's apply these principles to this technology, because it has all the ingredients to do so. So we went back to that meetup, and, uh, and we, had, uh, we, we, we defined a mission, and our mission was to build a decentralized, open, and crowdsourced IoT data network owned and operated by its users. So one day later, we were with a group of people. It was a holiday of 2015 in the summer. And we said, well, we're going to just launch this network, but we're going to do it distributed. So we need to find other people to invest in the infrastructure that might be interested in the future potential of such a network. So um, I went out, started calling a few people I knew, and, 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 and told them about IoT, and, well, like, look at the mousetrap, like, you can make money. Uh, and maybe some, 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 some other interesting use cases will emerge. And we have found all these companies in Amsterdam that said, OK, give me a gateway, this base station with a reach of 10 kilometers. At the time, it was 1,500 euros. And we set up all these, these gateways. And we created, within six weeks, a city-covering network of LoRaWAN for the city of Amsterdam. So 
Uh, we launched it at our office uh, at the Heergracht at the time. Did a large event on this, did a, lo a lot of PR around it. And we created a video, and that video ended with our Slack line is let's build this thing together. And the funny thing, this, uh, this, this, this news that this a group of people created an operator in a city, and they did it in a few weeks with little funding. And that story went viral all across the world. So within days, we got like, people from Sydney, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, like, oh, I want to also build my smart city. And like, this, this, you did it, it looked so easy, right? So you just tie a few gateways together, and we're, we're going to build this infrastructure, and then we're going to create all kinds of use cases on top of this. But they came back to us and said, hey, this is actually not that easy. We need somebody to make it more easy for us. We need to, like, we want to focus on all kinds of use cases, air quality, uh, uh, smart parking. Uh, so uh, we created a product that was very easy to create such a network. We did a Kickstarter around it. And there was very successful. We raised 600,000 euros through crowdfunding, globally selling these products around 60 countries. Uh, we did a lot of PR again. And we, like, this traction kept going and going. We were growing in this exponential phase, uh, winning all kinds of, uh, of prizes. So what we did, we enabled a lot of businesses to get started with IoT by making it very simple. So, so what we actually did, uh, because we were moving so fast, actually, while we, while we, while we were working, we, we became self-aware of actually what we were doing. So we found out, hey, we're, we're helping people going from zero to one with the Things Network. So you have an idea, and then you have a product. And once they, once they found something that worked, they wanted to scale it. They wanted to scale security. There's all kinds of hard bits. Uh, and then they wanted to pay us to do that. So then we thought that, that we can solve that. We built a company called the Things Industries. So we built that company, Things Industries, where we help you scale from one to a billion uh, in your IoT strategy. So, um, uh, and, and all kinds of features you see here with end-to-end -end encryption. We have these micro VPN systems we run over the network, and that's actually where our business model is. And we can also b uh, set up these private networks to have your own infrastructure in IoT. So then we got a, a bunch of few nice customers that, uh, that we were able to fund the business, and our network kept growing and growing and growing. And now, within three years, we have now 5,500 uh, gateways across more than 60 countries, and we have 55,000 developers on the platform. And we're routing 13 million messages a day, and we are like our service uh, uh, support network uh, in all regions. So this is how the network uh, looks right now, so 55 100 gateways, and you see how global this is. Like, this is really everywhere around the world. So last year, we decided to get all these developers over to Amsterdam. We had 700 people at a huge event. Uh, we're now doing these uh, events all around the world. This was in India. I just came back from Hyderabad. We did a Things Network conference. There were 500 people totally amazed. These were government officials that were, were opening this conference with. So we're just putting this technology out there, making it open, and allowing people to do so. So let's, uh, let me take you a bit from places in the world. So this is uh, KPMG, together with our integrator, Mesh, in Sydney. They're making smart uh, garbage cans using our networks uh, uh, in, in the Sydney fish market. Uh, together with Rabobank, next year, and uh, our inter uh, integrator, Sodak, we're going to connect uh, uh, in New Zealand 10,000 cows with smart ear tags. This is in Africa, so this is our uh, integrator from Slovenia. They're actually uh, helping uh, a scientist with their uh, wildlife, wildlife preservation, and these are green sea turtles, and they actually have a things network sensor on the back. It's pretty cool. This is in Japan. Uh, they're measuring radiation around nuclear plants, sending the little pieces of data over the network. Uh, somebody in Japan wrote a book about the Things Network. Pretty awesome, I um, would say. Um, so then we're starting to like, convert to these enterprises, industrial players. So now uh, Deutsche Bahn approached us and said, OK, we need to sync the clocks on all our railway stations. So in the coming years, we're going to connect all the clocks on the railway stations in Germany on our technology. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, there's 40,000 to go. Um, and of course, Deutsche Bahn was interested. 
And um, what's more better than unification of communication systems? So now ProRail uh, is doing uh, with an integrator uh, uh, that works with our technology Skylabs and all kinds of use cases with the Things Network as well. This is in a company from New York. They have uh, agriculture use case, so they're measuring, like, do we need more fertilizer? Do we need more water? Uh, actually, Heineken Fund invested in them. Uh, through the water crisis, we have uh, barriers at risk, so they're helping solve that. Um, this is a company from the US we're supporting. It's a very simple application. They put sensors in fridges so that people can generate compliance reports. In hospitals, you don't have to waste the very valuable time of nurses to, to do the logging and walk around. No, just place a gateway in a hospital, put these sensors, and, uh, and you can save a lot, of, a lot of money. This is in New York. Um, There's a sensor they put in the social housing, and they're checking the management company of the social housing if they're actually putting on the heat in the winter, because sometimes they put it down to save money. Uh, and there's actually a live feed on how many hours of violations of rules by the management of the social housing in Manhattan. And the funny thing is the, uh, the, 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 the major of Manhattan actually has a Things Network gateway on her desk. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so you have this ecosystem. Like, like this, this is this, this, is this uh, circular effect of making technology easy, available, and then all these different use cases. So these are all our partners just building all kinds of use cases. This is really endless uh, ecosystem what you see is happening now. And what you also see is that around the world, there's also uh, a lot of networks. And because you have this open standard, you can switch. So you can start developing something on the Things Network. And then you can run your network, your device also, for instance, on the LoRaWAN network of KPN or on the Orange or whenever, right? So you're free. And these open APIs allow you to switch whenever you want. Also, a lot of um, middleware uh, connectors are there. So like, you don't want to, for every use case, uh, change your middleware there as well. A lot of integrators working on this around the world, helping you to build, build these use cases and distributors that are available. So now the, the big how, right? So I was talking with Rob. So how can we, can we, can we, can we go back to the theme, the big how? And um, so if you look at what you need to build something, so if you want to get started, like, like be, be like us, like invest small, take little risk, figure out the technology. And what you need is devices, network, and an app. And those together can create a solution. So we created, especially for, for today, uh, a kit. Uh, and I have it here. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool kit. You can get it. It's, uh, it's uh, 2,500 euros. And if you are, you can order it here uh, today. I will just send you a link. You have a gateway, which uh, is connected to the Things Network sensors. You will get a few sensors that your developers can work with. So this is a temperature sensor. Hey, let me check this. This is smart mouse trap. Watch out with this one. It can actually break your finger. <laughs> uh, and then we have, like in the kit, we have a, a LoRaWAN Academy course for five of your employees, and we have two tickets to the conference. So uh, this uh, kit for an investment of 2,500 euros uh, will give you this experience that we had in the three years, and just get hands-on with the technology and see how you can like, unlock all this potential you have in your operations and do it at a fixed fee. An interesting thing is it only comes with the 2,500 euros, and then you can connect over the next two years an unlimited amount of devices. And so this, this really shifts the model on how you do connectivity to also more capex heavy model. So devices, network, apps, skills, so the online course, five seats and two tickets to the conference for 2,500 euros. And um, so you can look at your app and you can actually order it right now. I'm not going to put you on the spot, get things awkward, but just remember this link. It's going to be like this is offers on the table for 24 hours. So I'm like, we don't have a lot of time. So, and the funny thing is, so imagine it, everybody in the room. So, like, imagine this link. Everybody in the room would actually put a gateway that is like that 
on their office, then we would, like this is a network right now, we would have a, have a country covering network at a single CAPEX investment of 2,500 euros. Pushing an open standard, preventing vendor lock-in, and using open APIs and open technology. So uh, again, remember the link, make a picture. So, uh, so it, call your uh, uh, chief security officer. It has a 4G backhaul. Uh, so you don't have to connect it to your core network. It's not a good idea. We're just going to do 4G. going to make it easy for you. Like, uh, he can call us, your CSO, in the next 24 hours. We'll, 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 we've got the stuff covered. So, um, so while you're uh, all like, placing your order through that link, uh, I will just keep talking. Uh, and there's one more thing. And it's a very exciting announcement we're going to do today. Is we're going to partner with Cellnex. And um, it, everybody has seen these large towers across the Netherlands. So you have the one on the Zuidas, you have the one in Hilversum, you know, one in Eiselstein, probably with, with the, everybody knows that from the big uh, Christmas tree. And uh, we're partnering with them. And this is what their network looks like in Europe. So there's the big towers. You see uh, there's just 27 of them. In, in the Netherlands, but they're actually um, uh, quite, uh, quite active in Spain, Italy, and, and uh, in the uh, UK as well. And with them, we are uh, 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 offering, uh, in this campaign, uh, 10 positions where we will place carrier-grade LoRaWAN infrastructure on these big towers. And everybody that joins this campaign, so <laughs> this campaign, right? Uh, they can vote on where they want to have outdoor coverage that we are providing together with Celnex. So 24, uh, 2,500 euros, single CAPEX investment. You have education, unlimited device for the next uh, two years, and we will generate outdoor coverage together with Celnex. So um, I'm really curious what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. I want to thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I, I hope to see your order soon. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.